Hello, everyone. Sorry, I know I'm the one keeping you all from lunch, and <laughs> yeah, we're all quite hungry, so. <laughs> so yeah, thank you very much all for coming. My name is Fuad, and uh, I work on the Android systems team. I'm based in uh, London, Google, and uh, I work mainly on uh, PKBM. And today what I would like to talk to you about is the work that we've been doing in terms of uh, supporting what is now finally called guest memory for PKBM. So first of all, there's a lot of background information and this is a lightning talk, so I don't really have time to go over all the background information. So I put here um, some pointers for you all to refer to later in terms of looking at uh, the internals of KVM. Um, if you have to only, if you want to only look at one thing, I strongly recommend Quentin's talk uh, from LPC last year, where he goes into the uh, details of PKBM, and um, as well pointers to the source code of PKBM, as well as the guest memory port. That one is was done for version 13, so version 14 doesn't really have that many differences, so it should be pretty much the same. And there's another presentation in terms of the future use cases for PKBM. So there is just one thing I want to go over in terms of background, which is very important for understanding PKBM. It's the ARMv8 exception model. I think you've probably seen this before. This is sort of like a simplified uh, diagram of how, what it looks like for Android and how we use it in the PKBM. So in ARM, you have different exception levels. You have from EL0 to EL3. I'm only showing up to EL2 here because EL3 doesn't really matter. It goes from least privileged to most privileged. So EL0, you have your user space stuff. EL1, you have your kernel. And EL2, you have your hypervisor. And uh, in terms of PKVM, you could kind of argue that all PKVM is doing is maintaining the stage two page tables in order to protect the guest memory. I mean, of course, it does a little bit more than that, but that's really its most important task is the stage to get tables. And then you have the host kernel and some other PKBM stuff running in the host kernel that's maintaining its stage one page tables as well. And then you have the VMM as well as the virtual machine. So in terms of that, what are the similarities? Why are we interested in uh, guest memory in terms of PKBM? So PKBM, similar to TDX, for example, it's confidential computing. I'm not going to go into details of uh, exactly what that is. Um, but the idea here that we have is that the host, um, the way that we carve out memory for the guest, which is also similar to TDX, is that the host needs to donate the memory to the guest. And what we're doing for keep PKBM, after the memory donation happens, we need to make sure that the memory doesn't disappear, it doesn't go anywhere. So at the stage two, the hypervisor makes sure that it's protected, but in terms of EL1 or the host kernel space, we really need to make sure that the memory is still there somewhere and it's not going away. And for that, we're currently using PKVM a long-term GUP, which isn't really ideal. And as well, what we're currently doing for PKVM is that this donation happens from just your normal anonymous memory. So the host or user space allocates anonymous memory in the mem slot, user space address, and then that gets donated to the guest. Now, the problem with that is if this memory, this memory can be mapped by the host. Currently, we don't really have any way to prevent the host or a user space process running at the host from mapping that memory. And what happens if, if that happens, What could be a problem is if a user space process tries to access that memory, then at least this is slightly better than what would happen, for example, in <coughs> x86. We, would, we wouldn't get a, um, uh, um, a machine check. We would just get a sec fault to the user space process. So that's not really that bad, because if the user space process wants to shoot itself in the foot by accessing memory that it can't access because it's being protected by the hypervisor at stage two, that's fine. And here, because the host kernel knows where to deliver the signal to, it knows that, yes, this user space process accesses memory, so that's the one that I need to deliver the signal to. However, the problem is that it is possible that a misbehaving user space process could trick the host kernel into accessing that memory. So for example, by doing S trace or somehow getting S trace in the host kernel to access the memory that's being, um, that's mapped, of course, the hypervisor at uh, 
EL2 will catch that access, will send the signal back to the host, but the host kernel doesn't really know what to do with that signal, so the whole thing will crash. So still, confidentiality of the guests is maintained, but the problem is that, yeah, well, <laughs> the system is uh, down now. Yeah, exactly. And the lack of a good solution for this has been the biggest obstacle for us in terms of upstreaming PKVM. And one thing I need to point out about PKVM is that it is actually running. It is in production code. It's been in Android 13 since, uh, or in Android since Android 13, which is uh, 2022. So it has been around and we've upstreamed quite a bit of it, but there is still quite a bit more to do. So for us, when we saw the work that's being done on guest memory, we thought that, wow, this is really a great fit for us. We would like to adapt and use it. But here's the key. There are some differences in PKVM, or actually there's really one major difference in PKVM. It's that the protection, like I mentioned earlier, it happens at stage two, and it's really simply the way that we protect memory is stage two protections. Either it's owned by the guest, or owned by the host or shared by the guests. And then, and there's of course different variations, but that's it. It's really just about toggling protection. There is no encryption, memory is not encrypted. So this is software only. And the reason why this difference is kind of important is this gives us an opportunity in PKVM, which is a little bit more difficult than stuff like, for example, PDX or ARM CCA, is that we could share memory in place. And if sharing memory in place means that memory can go from being private to the guest to share it with the host and then private again and share it to the host without having to copy memory back and forth. Uh, yes, Sean? And you preserve the contents. That's uh, and, the key. and we preserve the contents, yeah. We don't have to copy back and forth and we preserve the contents. But you can do that with TDX and SMP no, TDX, as well. No, TDX, you have to uh, bounce it back and forth. You have to uh, use you just, a bounce buffer to copy it back and forth. You change the page. For, you, you mean as you change the page from shared to encrypted, you have to recopy the content? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. In uh, PKVM, we don't have to do that. You in can't in TDX. You, you literally can't in TDX. Once your VM is running in TDX, if you insert a page into the guest, which is what happens because you can't do invert in place conversions, the only memory, the only data you can insert in the guest is zeros. So, but it, the other side of this is it's, we're talking, some of the use cases are like hundreds of megs. And so any kind of copying is a non-starter. And so the in-place conver in place conversions, which means just sharing without being destructive to the data is the key use case. Okay, I was just gonna observe, we didn't really think of that when we did the SVSM. It does a lot of in-place conversions because AMD can do it. Yeah. So uh, let's jump forward and like see what mm -hmm. are the user space API implications and uh, what yeah. we want to talk about. Yeah, so the main use case that was actually do that is DRM. So when you're talking about DRM, you're trying to, you're dealing, I know, with the 4K uh, um, frames, that's gonna be a lot of memory. And that memory, it would be a huge overhead to copy it back and forth when you want to do the conversion to bounce it. Keep in mind that we're running this on a mobile phone with very limited memory and we're always struggling with getting enough memory on a mobile phone. So that's really the biggest um, uh, use case for us. And that's really the biggest difference um, in terms of, or the difference in terms of requirement for PKVM as opposed to the original idea or which was, which uh, guest memory was envisioned for. So yeah, to go to the problem statement, in other words, all we really need to be able to do in PKVM is to be able to mmap memory, but if we just map memory, then we're back to square one where you're mapping memory and you're risking uh, that that memory is going to be accessed when it's not, um, when you're not allowed to access it. So we, just, we don't want to just to map memory, but we just we want to make sure that we can only map memory that uh, is owned or shared with the host and memory that is private to the guest cannot be mapped. So this is really the key difference or the additional requirement that we want with uh, for guest memory. And this is the, the, the kernel, the kernel itself knows whether it's um, the memory is currently shared or not. When you have the exact. No, I, actually, that's one of the problems. <laughs> one of the problems that the kernel, um, at least for us right now, or until guest memory came along, the kernel does not know whether the memory is shared or not. There is no tracking the kernel. So as you see here, um, EL2s, the hypervisor knows whether memory is shared, uh, is shared or not. EL1, the host kernel, uh, just see if you talk yeah, about yeah, no, 
uh, the host kernel doesn't know whether memory is shared or not. So this is one of the it, challenges, actually. It, it has to in order to make the decision. No, no it doesn't. Have... That's the point. I understand, but you like the way it works in, in, in SMP, for example, is to make a request to say this page now should be shared. That year one in your case would always always know about. I mean, I don't I don't hey, wait. Uh, sorry, no, I was gonna, <laughs> sorry, I was gonna say the, the difference here, SMP runs at EL2, not EL1 in KVM. That's the difference. Conceptually it's the same. EL2 here is basically what um, your SMP firmware would be, and then you have the rest. Same, same difference. No, conceptually what? it is the same, but the thing is. Um, this guy over here, the host kernel, doesn't really can or currently doesn't have access to what's happening with the CH2 page table. It doesn't know it. It Correct. cannot Correct. currently know. But it could get a notification, right? It yeah, could, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying like that. PKVM could tell it using yeah, yeah, either exactly. a bitmap yeah. or using a active <laughs> event. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. Whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or you could always have yes. your, your stage one thing, your, your host kernel, uh -huh. be the one that X perm permission changes in PKVM, right? No. So it always would be yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You, 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 you're <laughs> so, you're kind of stealing my presentation or what I'm trying so to. So I think get to the next slide. I think the problem is, <laughs> yeah. and like we're running low on time, get to what we need to add and what the difficulties are because yeah, yeah. You're, you're spot on. The, the problem is how do we safely transition between it's shared and then how do we get it back to not shared and yeah. not have ding -ling 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 Exactly, yeah. So, so exactly, this is the point. So the idea is that we need to somehow we need to maintain state at EL1 to uh, to track that, yeah. And this has been uh, really the, big, the biggest challenge. And the idea, of, or actually maintaining the state is pretty easy, but really just making sure that we don't have any race conditions, that's uh, becoming the, or that is the tricky part. So the idea is that we have essentially, we could say that we have three states we care about here for a page. So this is what I guess frame looks like really. I should have had the text a little bit bigger. I apologize if you can't read, if you're having a hard time reading this. But the idea, each frame conceptually has three states that we really care about. Um, we have what the kernel, as in the EL1 sees, what the kernel thinks about well, what it is, what the stage at the, what the sharing state at stage two is, which is whether it's uh, shared or private, and whether it's mapped. So the one of the changes that we did was using the new attributes array added um, so that attributes array tracks by the way whether user space thinks it's shared or private but the whole idea is that we can't trust user space we can't trust user space letting us know hey it's private so what we did is that we added another attribute to the attribute array that doesn't really track whether it's shared or private it just tracks whether it's mappable or not mappable mappable by the host and this attribute can only be set by the kernel. It cannot be set by user space. So, and the way that this attribute gets updated is on exits, on every kernel exit. So when uh, the guest uh, shares memory with the host, we had the KVM exits that was there already. We didn't add that. But when you exit to the host, you exit to the host for the reason for the exit. And yeah, you have a page that has been shared with you. And then the host sees whether it's shared, it can uh, clear the flag whether it's mappable or by the way the flag is no map because it maps with private so um, because no map in private ideally anything that's map marked as private should be marked as no map and anything that's shared should be mappable so yeah but it doesn't really matter the polarity can be inverse but we just saw that it made sense to for it for it to be set when it's private or not but anyway and we're using the exits uh, the exits whenever we exit in order to set that or to clear that and the invariant that we want is that we never ever want to have memory being mapped and at the same time private for the guests. So this is really the invariant that we're trying to uh, prevent here. So the biggest differences really, or the changes that we've done was, first of all, support map and uh, fault. And then adding these states and making sure that on every transition, so this is the state space, only one of these states can change in every single transition to make sure as well to avoid races. And in terms of going from every state to the other, making sure that um, to allow that transition to happen, making sure that if it's something that is shared, then it cannot be mapped. And the idea is that 
go, um, by in, KV, in PKVM, everything is private by default. And going from pri private to shared isn't really all that scary because here you don't really worry too much about potential races or anything because here if something becomes shared and you just uh, there's a little bit of lag in terms of allowing it to, to be a map or not it's not a problem the problem is going the other way around the problem when the guest has shared something with the host and then it tries to um, revoke the sharing again or make it private again and this is where we really really need to be careful to not have uh, end up in any state where anything is mapped by the host and having that mapped by the guest. And here, one of the tricky parts as well that um, the current solution that we have is how do we deal with a guest trying to unshare something that is currently mapped by the host? What do we do? So first, when the host gets the unshare request, we check whether it is mapped by the host or not. And if it's not by the, mapped by the host, that's not a problem. But if it's mapped by the host, then we wait for that or we see what we exit to the host and give it the opportunity to do one of two things. First of all, to either unmap it. And the second part, which is to acknowledge that it's private or not. So if the, how does the host acknowledge that it's private? By using the attribute array and saying, yes, it's actually private now. And if the host has acknowledged that it's private, and at the same time, it has, and it hasn't unmapped it, then we consider it to be an error behavior on the host. So we exit back to the host saying, no, there's an error here, an error condition. You said that it is private, but you haven't unmapped all references. But the host as well can, um, uh, the host as well, sorry, uh, let me just finish the sentence. The host as well can decide that, no, I, re I reject the unsharing. I want to keep it as private, in which case the hyper call that the guest as issued to unshare it will get the um, denied or the negative act saying, nope, the unshare did not succeed. So you want to keep it as shared, not as private? Yeah. OK. So basically, what you're adding here is uh, a notification mechanism between uh, the hyper call to YL2 that makes the guest, the, the host, uh, validate uh, the, the transition. Yeah, exactly. Oh, OK. So. And uh, what happens in like how do so how do you know if it's uh, so so one step back the mappable is uh, a guest virtual ad address right yeah yes so, so, sorry guest physical address yeah and uh, and the other one is also guest physical address yeah but, they're both but guest from physical the point address of, view yeah. of, the, of the stage two exactly table, yes. so uh, um, how does the host know that it is mapped uh, uh, we check the map count. Ah, okay. okay. You also have the inverse that if that shared memory was given back to the host and then the, the guest wants it back as private, you have a protocol to ask the EL2 and then accept that memory as coming back into the, the confidential guest. So this is... So you, when the guest wants to reclaim it as private? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is what happens. But the host needs to acknowledge as well. Right. Because one thing is, well, uh, which we don't support yet, but in the future, there's a problem of multi-sharing. So for example, the host could have shared it with a third party, uh, for example, Trust Zone or something like that. And then the host could simply be not able not to revoke the sharing. The host could be, un or the host, some other entity other than the VMM for some reason has mapped it, and the VMM cannot unmap it. So. Uh, regarding, um, just a quick question on the, have you run into problems in testing of things other than your VMM having uh, maps that have caused essentially spurious failures because something else in the system was tracing or doing something funky and just happened to grab a reference at the wrong time? I haven't run into it, but the thing is, to as well, <laughs> to be completely honest, for the time being, we don't actually have any user, any, sorry, use cases that do an unshare. So currently, all the use cases that we have only share memory. They never unshare. So all the tests that I had to do for unshare were use cases that I just created for testing because we don't have any actual existing use case that's unsharing. That makes a lot of sense. Well, it, you, may, you may have this dispatch on the list um, from someone, forgot who, um, to do a dynamic software TLB uh, sizing. Uh -huh. right? So you can uh, dynamically expand and, and shrink your buff bounce buffer region. And there, unshare is actually pretty useful. Mm -hmm. um, you mostly care about reads, not writes faulting, right? Um, 
care so, about both really it doesn't really matter for us whether it could be read or write i mean it's the same really we any access doesn't really matter we don't really care about one more than the other okay so i was just thinking like wait, what what if you could have a force unmap that literally just remaps to a zero page and ignores writes in a way right and then you just basically steal that memory from the host yeah that would open a can of worms i think yeah so they considered that for uh i think in the context of the smp series that was proposed along the ideas of oh on an rmp violation page fault instead of just killing stuff you can just map it to some other page but there are lots of examples where there's a lot of code where if you hit it and you're blindly doing that what if you're wrong and you're suddenly overwriting kernel text because of some other like you take one bug and then you make it far worse by doing something that right. you shouldn't be doing yeah and we're out of time <laughs> okay thank you very much everyone